you're a temporary worker and you're interfering in the planning. You don't know yourself. She surely glared at me. Get out of here. Now. She stole my project and I finally ran out of patience. I understand. I'll leave. The next morning. The president insists on meeting with you. I was greeted in the president's office by an unexpected person. My name is NJ. I work as a temp in the editorial department of a publishing company. Smile at all times. Is my favorite phrase. I decided to get this job because I loved my family's bookstore, which was owned by my mother. I loved reading books while helping my mother as a storekeeper. My mother often recommended books that were a little difficult for elementary school students. When I was stuttering, saying that I didn't understand even if I read the book, my mother would tell me. Do your best at what you have to do, even if it is something you are not good at. If you work hard, you will have fun. I loved my mother who loved books. My mother, whom I loved very much, passed away when I was still in the fourth grade. I still vividly remember the last time I saw her, just before she passed away. I leaned close to her, held her hand, and called out to her, she whispered. Anne, you came. My mother, who used to be surrounded by books and smiling at all times, was now fading away. When I started to cry out loud, she giggled and said. Don't cry, smile for me. I replied, choking back sobs. Yeah. I'll try to smile. That was the last time I saw her. From then on, I decided to smile at all times. Later, I was taken in by a relative and my mother's bookstore disappeared. After that, I studied hard to get a job working with books, just like my late mother. However, I had a hard time adjusting to my relative's house, so I decided to find a job as soon as I graduated from junior high school. Eventually, after registering with a temp agency, I was assigned to this publishing company. This company has been very good to me. They are all nice people, and they praise me for my smile and my hard work. Except for one person, Olivia, my boss. So, when are you going to submit that document? Olivia, the assistant deputy editor, came to my desk this morning, as usual, to snipe at me with her sharp eyes and cold voice. Well, I will submit this form by the afternoon of the day after tomorrow. Really? Are you going to submit it just before the deadline? You make so many mistakes, don't you? I'm sorry about the other day. I'll finish it as soon as possible. Well then. There should be enough time, right? Do this. Olivia is what is called a bumptious old female. Sure. I made a desperate attempt to smile and received the documents. I will do hard things if I have to, and I will always have a smile on my face. That's what I promised my mother. You're so goofy. Olivia was a complete nuisance to me. It was not unusual for her to make me make coffee several times a day only for me, or to force me to do chores. She often lied to me, or suddenly said in front of a male employee, this girl just burped. I was purposely bumped into by her in an unoccupied area and told in a quiet voice that I was a high school dropout or that I was ugly. In public she would not harass me, 
but she would hit me so hard that I would go out of my way to approach her just to be sarcastic. Many employees were afraid of her harsh words, but many did not know her until she showed her insidious face only to her targets when they were alone with her. They just seemed to think of her as a sarcastic and slightly mean-spirited boss. In addition, Olivia seemed to have had a very close relationship with one of our senior executives in the past. So no one could speak strongly against her. After managing to complete a busy morning and taking a breather during my lunch break, I returned to my desk to find that I had been called by the editor-in-chief earlier in the afternoon. You wanted to see me? I went and found the chief editor and Olivia waiting there. I'd like to talk to you about this document. I looked over the document and noticed that the name of the client was incorrect. I'm sorry. I'll fix it right away. While hurriedly apologizing, I thought to myself, huh? This document was in the packet that Olivia had given me earlier, I thought back. Olivia noticed it. I should thank her. Thank you. Very much. Olivia grinned and said triumphantly. I really don't like temporary workers. They don't have any sense of responsibility. The editor-in-chief nudged her. Well, well. It's a little hard to imagine you making a mistake like this. Are you tired? No, I'm all right. I'm sorry. Olivia interrupted. Or maybe it's because you only have a middle school diploma. The editor-in-chief frowned for a moment, but said nothing to Olivia. Editor-in-chief said, and, once again, be very careful in the future. I apologize. I spent that afternoon with a sinking feeling. Olivia had purposely set me up to sign a document with a typographical error. How could I be so stupid as to fall for such a shallow trick? I bit my lip to hold back the tears that welled up in my eyes. By the time the job was over, I was exhausted. I staggered through the darkened streets. If only I could go somewhere where no one knew me. At that moment, a narrow side street that I would normally pass by suddenly caught my eye. I strained my eyes and saw an illuminated sign that read used books far in the distance. I had never noticed a second-hand bookstore in such a place before. Ah, for the first time in a long time, I wanted to be surrounded by books and take my time picking them up. As if being lured, I walked into the narrow alley. The store I was looking for was more compact than I had expected. The light inside the store leaked into the alley through the automatic glass door with the red used book sign affixed to it. The modestly sized store was crammed with tall shelves and many books. Hi, welcome. I entered the store and was greeted from behind the cash register by a middle-aged man who appeared to be the owner of the store. He was stylish and dandy which was unexpected for a small second-hand bookstore in a back alley. I was a little taken aback. Huh. There seemed to be no customers in the store. The smell of used books filled the air. It was different from my mother's store, after all. My mind is at a loss between absurd disappointment and a pleasant sense of freshness. A closer look at the bookshelves revealed a variety of miscellaneous books rubbing shoulders with each other. Among them, I found a familiar title. Ah, Run, Melus. Among my mother's many recommendations, this one was a particular favorite, and she even used to read it to me. 
I picked it up and looked at it. The book had faded to a soft cream color and was beautifully old. It must have been read with great care. I felt a warmth in my heart. What a nostalgic memory. Tears welled up in my eyes and my vision was shaking. I had been a crybaby that day. I quickly wiped my tears with my sleeve. Let's buy this book and go home. I decided and headed for the cash register. I'll take this one, please. The man looked up and smiled. Thank you very much. The man glanced at me as he checked the book. Apparently, my eyes were turning red. It's nice to see a young person like you buying used books. In a gentle voice, the man continued. Secondhand books have been carefully read and passed down from generation to generation. He smiled at me, and I naturally smiled back. A wave of emotion that I could not hold back engulfed me before I knew it. Ugh. I began to cry on the spot as I pulled some coins out of my wallet. The tears wouldn't stop and I even started to have hiccups. Oh, well. Wait a minute. He brought a towel from the back of the store and lent it to me. He pulled out a small chair from the cash register and sat me down, while he himself pulled out a step stool from the aisle and sat down, waiting for me to calm down. Wiping my face with a towel, I finally spoke up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. Not at all, don't worry about it. Thank you very much. The man's name was Thomas Mason. This second-hand bookstore was established by Mr. Mason when he was still young. Jay, do you like Run, Melos? Yes, my mother loved it. Oh, I see. I guess justice is love. My mother said something similar. We both chuckled. Thank you very much for the towel. I will return it to you after I wash it. That's very polite of you. Well, come again. I thanked him and left the store. The next Saturday, when I went to return the towel, Mr. Mason saw me sobbing and said, Welcome back. I started going to his second-hand bookstore every weekend after that. We talked a lot in the storefront. We talked about books, of course, but also about other things, from small talk to personal matters and even work. Mr. Mason was truly knowledgeable about the publishing industry, perhaps because he was the owner of a second-hand bookstore. Before long, Mr. Mason began to listen to my complaints about my work. One day, I told him about a project that was not bearing fruit. Right now, I'm working on a project called 10 Heartwarming Literary Works to Recommend to Elementary School Students. Oh, it sounds nice. It's a compilation of books my mother recommended to me when I was a child. That project was unfortunately discovered by Olivia and was squashed. When I remembered, I seemed to have a gloomy look on my face. Mr. Mason urged me to talk. You can talk to me about anything. Oh no. That's not right. Saying this, I got carried away and told him about not being able to get a full-time job and about how Olivia was harassing me. Mr. Mason paused for a moment to think, then encouraged me in a gentle voice. Hey. Your problems will get better. Oh, I hope so. Then Mr. Mason said something strange. 
I'm going to see Jay's work sometime. What do you mean? You're bringing a project to my company? Well, yeah, I guess so. I'll bring in a project or two inch. Ha ha ha, that sounds good. The joke made me feel happy, but it didn't make my uneasiness go away. Then, earlier that week, an incident occurred. Just before noon, the editor-in-chief called several employees. Among them was that Olivia. Well, the reason I asked you all to gather here is nothing more than that. As for the special project, we have decided to adopt Olivia's idea. A document was handed to everyone. It reads, Olivia's project. Ten famous books to recommend to children was written in large letters on it. No way. The plan was all too familiar. Because this was so similar to the project I had thought of. As for the details, we will discuss them at the meeting this afternoon. Wait a minute. This project is mine. Some people gaped in surprise, others fell silent awkwardly, while others quietly returned to their work. Olivia snickered. After all, isn't this girl crazy? She sounded like she was mocking me from the bottom of her heart. I even have proof! I hurried back to my desk and rummaged through my drawers. There should have been a document I had prepared for a presentation. Oh, no! How could it be? It's not there, it's not there. Why can't you find it? That's right. The file must have been left on the company's computer. I hurriedly checked the folder, but the file that should have been there disappeared without a trace. The editor-in-chief, who had followed me, spoke to me fearfully. Anyway, calm down. I bit my teeth in frustration. Jay, let's talk first. That's not necessary. Olivia interrupted loudly. This girl called someone a thief for no reason. This girl is so frustrated that she is a middle school graduate. She's been jealous of me since before. All the people on the floor were now looking at us anxiously. I could hear them whispering to each other from places. Yes, that's right. This girl is trying to steal my project. Olivia continued in a low voice. You're a temporary worker and you're meddling in my projects. You're so arrogant. She surely glared at me. I'm going to tell him. You're fired. The editor-in-chief froze when he heard the word him. He stood there with a bitter look on his face. Get out of here. Quickly. Olivia's shouts finally made me lose my patience. Okay. I'll get out. Jay. It's okay. I will contact you shortly. I said that much as if I was squeezing out and grabbed my bag. I walked out of the office at a brisk pace and exhaled deeply. I wasn't convinced. Still, if I've come this far, I'm not going to get away with it. Anyway, tomorrow I would have to explain the situation to the dispatcher. With tired feet, I headed home. When I woke up the next morning, my head was heavy and my eyes were sore from crying so much. Just when I thought it was time to get ready to leave for the dispatch center, my smartphone rang. 
It was an outside call from the editorial office. I hesitated for a moment, but immediately pressed the call button. Hello. Jay. I'm glad you picked up. It was the editor-in-chief himself who called me. I apologize for the inconvenience. Actually, the president of our company would like to meet with you. Can you please come in now? What? Yes, sir, yes, I will. Then, I will be waiting for you. Once the call was done, I began to get worried. My company was a subsidiary of a major publishing company with a separate office for a division specializing in monthly magazines. What kind of business could it possibly be that the president, whom I rarely have the opportunity to meet, wanted to see me in person? The editor-in-chief was kind, but did he really think I would be accused of a crime? My head felt even heavier. Still, I finished getting ready and dragged my heavy feet to the front of the office. Just as I was about to put my hand on the knob, the door swung open on the other side. Whoa! Jay, we've been waiting for you. Despite my surprise, the editor-in-chief welcomed me with a big smile. I quietly walked in and found a few people looking at me with interest. For some reason, Olivia did not seem to be there. Well, President Mason came by this morning and said he'd love to meet you. Oh, that reminds me, our president's name is also Mr. Mason, right? When he found out you were not here, he asked me what had happened, so I gave him a brief report about what happened yesterday. Um, I'm really sorry. I... No, 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 I'm the one who is sorry. Let's talk later. The editor-in-chief knocked on the conference room door and received a reply. Come in. Well, go ahead. Behind the open door sat that friendly second-hand bookstore owner. Your... Mr. Mason was dressed in a more expensive suit than usual and smiled in his usual way. Well, I've heard your story, come sit here. Mr. Mason, what brings you here? Well, of course I came to see you. Excuse me. The editor-in-chief brought coffee for me. Please let me know if there is anything I can do for you. He smiled at us and left the room. I finally decided to ask him. Mr. Mason, you are our president, aren't you? Surprised? Well, yes. He laughed aloud, ha ha ha. According to President Mason, even though the publishing company he participated in has grown into a large corporation, he has carefully preserved the small second-hand bookstore he established with his wife when he was young. He was still there on weekends and when he had time, of his own accord. It was only after a while that he realized that I was working for his company. It was not unreasonable, as I had mentioned a few specifics to him. However, he told me that he had kept it a secret because he was sure that if I knew that he was the president of the company where I worked, I would not open up to him as much as I had. So, about Olivia. President Mason said in a serious voice. I've been shown her planning documents. It looks exactly like the project you mentioned. Yes, it does. I mean. It was an important project, filled with your mother's memories, wasn't it? Yes. I couldn't help but tear my eyes up. The president said. 
I've decided to have Olivia go away. I'm sorry for all the trouble I put you through. Oh, no, don't call it trouble, hee <laughs> hee. With a shy smile, a tear slipped down my eye. Then I was officially hired as an employee of the company. Everyone in the company was as loving as ever. In fact, I felt more overprotective than before. Our clients told me that I was trustworthy and entrusted me with many projects. A letter arrived a short time later from Olivia. The letter contained words of apology and naked sentiments. She wrote, I was jealous of your hard work in everything you did, as if you had something that I didn't have. I secretly threw away the documents on your desk, erased the data on your computer, and tried to make the project my own. President Mason and I still talk on weekends at the second-hand bookstore. I once asked him why he was so good to me. He told me that my grandfather on my mother's side and he had known each other for a long time. My grandfather was his mentor when he was studying business management at university. Perhaps because of this connection, Mr. Mason's son and I hit it off while working together. We went on many outings together. A short time later, we were married. Fifteen years have passed since then. I retired from the editorial department when I became pregnant and had a baby, and now I live peacefully with my husband and daughter, taking care of my father-in-law's second-hand bookstore. What did you think of this story? And please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.